greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and viewers across the World Wide Web. This is Tune 215. And right now, I'm riding Dolo. I'm giving Omi a break, letting her rest. And I'm gonna be doing a driving tour of a random neighborhood. Right now, I'm on County Line Road here in Spring Hill, Florida. I wanted to show you guys some of these small blocks that's around here. This is kind of like a country suburban area here in Florida. But I noticed on the way to the main commercial strip a few days ago that there were some small blocks on the right and on the left. So I figured I'd start the tour down here, take you guys on the drive so y'all can see some of the country roads over here in Florida. Florida has country and city areas. This I would consider being one of the country areas with like farms, cows, horses, suburban households. It is 74 degrees right now, it's not bad. On this road right here on County Line Road, there's a lot of land for sale. Look at my right, 28 acres for sale. That's a lot of land for sale, guys. 28 acres. You know what you could do with 28 acres? You could build your dream home and a farm. We got Farnsworth Boulevard on my right. We got the American, All-American Veterans Association on my left. Family Extended Care Spring Hill on my right. We got Suncoast Braces and Orthodontist on my left hand side. We got House of Wisdom Teeth on my right hand side. Passing Seven Hills Drive on my right hand side. There's another dentistry building on my right. There's a whole plaza over here with several businesses, like a Dollar Tree and all that stuff. This isn't the main plaza, but this is one of the plazas that I noticed that's on uh, this area. If you go up more, then you'll get to the main plaza, which is like a Walmart, uh, Cracker Barrel, Best Buy, and all that stuff. But we're not there yet, that's like 10 minutes away. We got Florida Cancer Association on my right. Bayfront Health of Spring Hill on my right, Applebee's. On my left, you'll enter Shady Hills Road if you make a left. If you make a right, you'll hit Mariner Boulevard at the next signal. We got a storage facility on my right, storage and sense. We got a car wash on my right that's now hiring. We got an auto zone on my left. We have a Tires Unlimited on my right. We got a K gas station on my left. It's called Circle K. Gas is going for $3.29 per gallon. And we have a Speedway on my right. Two different gas stations. And the gas is going for $3.29 there also. So they're about the same price. We're passing Mariner Village. And we got Cataract and Laser Institute. And we got drive through oil change on my left. It's a five minute drive through supposed to be like a quick drive through it's insane. We're passing McDonald's and a Taco Bell. Yeah, that drive through is pretty interesting because when you drive through it, they walk down like a lower level of like ground steps and go right under your engine bay and they drop your oil. And they're supposed to be really fast at doing it. I saw that first in South Carolina. I was blown away when I seen the guy walk under the car rather than jack it up. He just walked under like some steps. We got Advanced Auto on my left. We got Ford Power Stroke repairs on my left. Passing Springtime Street. We got Shady Pet. All animals, um, I believe they have like animal feed. Mike's West Coast Auto Repair on my left. County Line Auto Repair on my left. Westwood Park. Office Suites on my left, County Line Mowers on my left. I'm traveling below average speed. The required speed limit here is I believe 50. I'm doing 42. I do have cars behind me. This is a main road, so you kind of got to keep it flowing. But when we get to the side blocks, then I'll slow it down some. We got a County Line Animal Hospital on my left. Passing Peach Tree Drive. We got a couple RVs on my right. It's RV storage. There was a pet cremation services on my left. We got Spring Hill Domino Club on my left. Adventure Coast Fun Park on my right. Go karts, mini um, golf. They have arcades and all types of stuff. 
and they got more land for sale, am I right? They literally have a, a go-kart track. They got Simply Self Storage on my left. Integrity Pest Control Services on my left. Ashton Evacuating. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Excavating Services. <laughs> I said evacuating. Got another tire shop on my left-hand side. As you guys can see, this is a, a pretty long road here. This is just a pinch of it. We just passed Kelly Drive. We got Rochester Pest Control, Pool Medics on my right. Oak Lake Drive on my right, passing Candlewick Ave. I think I could have made a right down Candlewick Ave. Let me make a right down Shelby Ave. This is a residential block. So this is gonna give you guys an idea. There you go, I was able to slow it down. We're traveling about nine miles an hour right now. And now you guys are able to see what some of these houses look like off the county road over here in Florida. Now I believe this is Hernando County. This is Spring Hill, Florida, but Spring Hill is located in Hernando County. Look at the clouds. The clouds have nice contrast. These houses are one story. A lot of them have the stucco cement work, nice large lawns, driveways, palm trees. They got chain link fence on my left, separating the property line. We're approaching Pebble Street. This is Shelby Ave and Pebble Street. So we got houses on my left, houses on my right. Um, I can do both. I'm gonna make a right hand turn. There's plenty of signs that are supposed to beware, private property, beware of dog. The where it says farmhouse right there in front of us. We're approaching Candlewick Ave. Candlewick Ave is the first block that we pass. We have some women on my left-hand side having a conversation. They're actually on my right-hand side. Did I say my left? That tends to happen sometimes. It's like my brain turns dyslexic almost. You know, to my knowledge, I believe dyslexia is when you flip things in reverse. You see things in reverse. Well, there's been several tours where I would see something on my right, but I would say it's on my left, or I would see something on my left, but I would say it's on my right because I was looking on my left while I was saying it, or vice versa. It's weird. I'm not diagnosed as dyslexic, but yeah. Kingsdale Street and Candlewick Ave. We're going to continue traveling forward. This house over here on my left is it's nice. Check it out. It's a two-story house. Look at that. Beautiful garage. Nice piece of property. Got houses tucked away on my right and tucked away on my left. Now, as always, with most suburban neighborhoods, we got national security on my right-hand side. Phoenix National Security. As always, with most suburban neighborhoods, the houses are tucked away. They're pushed off of the street side. So, you know, you, you don't really get the, the best pristine view. But this paints a picture, gives you an idea. They got a whole workout set on my right hand side. And there was a crow on top of the workout set. Oh, no, he's actually on top of the basketball court. I think he's trying to work on his b-ball game. Look at the house in front of us. See, that's a cool view. Gives you a good view of the house. We're on Steward Court in Candlewick Ave. They got plenty of Halloween decorations. The address is 8319 Stewart Court, Spring Hill, Florida. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Nice little piece of property they got going on there. I can make a right or I can make a left. I think I'm gonna make a left. I already made a right once. Check out the mailbox on my right. Very festive, Halloween designs and all of that. Oh, 
pressure washing business advertised behind us. So no outlet in front of us. So we're approaching Sawyer Ave. So we're on Stewart Court of Sawyer Ave. This is a no outlet, but why not go forward and see what the no outlet looks like? There's a lot of crows over here. I see a lot of crows. Now the birds that are vicious are the vultures. I saw vultures on the highway feeding on a carcass and those things were relentless. They were not giving up. We had a whole family all over here. I'm gonna allow the Mini Cooper to reverse. There's a whole family, I guess they're um, parting ways with the Mini Cooper. Whoever's in the Mini Cooper must be their, their family. They're waving by, they're waving goodbye. They gave them a heads up to, to basically wait. This is the last house on the court and you see this water right there on my right hand side. So that house has a pretty good view of the water which is cool. I think that's a good way to live in a no outlet. It's not like you got a bunch of greenery behind you, but you got a cool little waterfront. Even if you don't use the waterfront, sometimes water is relaxing to look off into. All right, let's make this right on Sawyer Ave. I see an RV over here. This looks like a class C RV. It must be theirs because there's no way that you can park an RV in this neighborhood without getting in trouble. So they probably own the RV and just park in the street side. It looks like a small RV. It looks like a good, wow, it's an E350. I would estimate that being like a 20 footer, probably a little less, like an 18 footer. That's actually really good. You can maneuver and get into a lot of places without having to worry about parking. I'll tell you from experience. Uh, we're at Gulfport Lane and Sawyer Ave. We just made a right in Gulfport Lane. They got a whole bunch of trees on my right. It looks nice. I like those trees. They're standard trees, but they're all doing the matrix, meaning they're doing like the lean back move, the lean back motion. You ever wonder why some trees grow like that? Got a boat on my right hand side. Like they're leaning back like if they're dodging a bullet. Look at this house. This house is gorgeous. It got stucco too, but I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> Two story, nice little double deck um, porch. They have a garage, the brick driveway. Sheesh, and they got a nice piece of land around them. And it's actually deep. Like it's not only wide or tall, but it's deep. Sheesh. You see they got street side mailboxes. I see many generic plastic mailboxes. The ones you get from like Home Depot, Lowe's and all that. Then I see these fancy mailboxes. People, I guess, care about the presentation of the mailbox. I've seen plenty of creative um, homemade mailboxes throughout my journey. Like I've seen a lot of ideas and, and people went all out with their mailbox. I've seen a lot of fortified mailboxes. There was a gentleman on my right working on his pickup truck in his garage. Motorized vehicles prohibited in front of us on that um, walkway. Let's make this right-hand turn. We're on Gulfport Lane and Waterfall Drive. We got two children on my left that look like they're on their way to school. Paige Lane on my left. I can make a left. I'm going to make this left. We got several kids over here on the corner. Wow, they're on their way to school. It is about that time of the day. It's early in the a.m. I wanted to hit this one early. How would you feel about sending your kids off to school in a neighborhood like this? I know you're supposed to feel safe, right? You're supposed to feel safe. <clears throat> I don't know. I guess just my... My urban mentality makes me extra cautious and I would rather just drop them off, especially if they're not of age to like defend themselves. Cause this is the type of neighborhood where people can just jump out on you and not many people will hear anything, if that makes any sense. We're at Page Lane and Baton Ave. I'm gonna make this right on Baton Ave. In the city, it's more dense, it's more populated, it's more ambience, it's more people going around, it's more traffic, it's more witnesses. You understand? Over here, the only witness is like 
me right now, the, the passerby. You see, there's not much traffic. There's not many cars driving. I feel like it's better to be safe than sorry. So I would be one of those parents that would probably drop my kids off. Let's make this right on Glenlock Lane. Nowadays, they got homeschooling too, so. Sometimes it's good to send the kids to school because they give them the experience of socializing and, and talking with their friends, you know? Sometimes they need those social skills in, in, in the work field, but I guess it'd be cool to have a conversation with the child, leave it up to them, you know? And that's if you have the time to do homeschooling because homeschooling also is a job in itself. You're basically the educator. It was a private drop in a postal service on my right. There's another RV on my right, a mini Winnie. Let's make this left on Rove Cross Lane. The mini Winnie, you see it? Cool RV. We're on Roy Crest Lane. like some contractors on my left and or maybe the homeowner that just has his trailer connected to do some work i see there's they're spraying uh, for pests on my left i saw a gentleman with a backpack with some liquid in it spraying for pests all right i don't know if this is the same road with the kids i haven't been paying attention where we've been going if this is just another corner with kids but check it out there's several kids out here with book bags now this looks like a different corner of kids Gonna make this left hand turn. Yeah, it looked like you had four kids out there. I don't know if they're waiting for the bus, maybe. Maybe this is the type of neighborhood where you wait for the bus, right? Where you wait for the cheese bus to pick you up. Yeah, because school is probably a long walk away. And you've seen the main road, County Line Road. It's, it's, we're making a left on Glenlock Lane once again. We're on Baton Ave and Glenlock Lane. Oh, this might be baton out that that sign is probably twisted yeah this looks like one of those um neighborhoods where you need a vehicle to travel you know because the the roads not to mention half of them don't have sidewalks look at these there's no sidewalks so how are you gonna like navigate throughout the day if there's no sidewalks dangerous you gotta walk in the street especially for kids This is the type of neighborhood where there's barely any, any street lights. Tree service. Oh, so that pickup truck right there with that trailer is a tree service business. It's the Mini Winnie on um, my right. So we just went through here. We just made a big circle, but I'm going straight because I see a whole bunch of flags hung here on my right hand side. I see some Halloween decorations over here. I see a whole mannequin with like a Jason mask. I mean, uh, uh, Friday 13th. No, is it a Michael Myers mask? I'm sorry, Michael Myers. That's the one with the white mask with the red hair. Jason's the one with the hockey mask. Which one y'all thought was scarier? Jason or Michael Myers? Let me know your thoughts. I was never a big fan of Michael Myers. Uh, we're on Glenlock Ave and Alhambra Court. Alhambra Court. Can I make this, this left? I think I can make this left. This is something different. We didn't go through here. I was never a big fan of Michael Myers. I always thought he, he, was, he was wimpy. Like I wasn't a big fan of slashers. Of, of physical human beings who stabbed and killed throughout the whole movie. I thought it was kind of cheesy. Like, they're only human. Like, there's nothing really to be afraid of. Um, I wasn't a big fan of Jason either, but if I had to pick from one of the two, I would say Jason, because he's more otherworldly. He had the deformed face. He was more, he was like strong, especially the more modern Jasons. The earlier Jasons were kind of wimpy too, from like the 80s. He was kind of wimpy. Um, but like, if you look at Jason versus, or Jason X, or Jason versus Freddy, they buff him up some. They give him that that like that diabolical, evil, sinister look. He looks cool, so I would say Jason, Michael Myers, eh, some guy in a red and then a white mask with, with a blue jumpsuit with red hair with a knife. I don't know. I was more into like the Freddies, the Chuckies, the Leprechauns. You know what I mean? Like like the actual cool characters, the the Hellraiser, the the. You know, Rumple Still skins, the other characters that that look like creepy, if that makes any sense. The clowns from outer space. Remember the clowns on the ice cream truck? That was cool. 
Rosedale Ave in Alla, in Alla, in Alla, Alla, Alhambra. I'm sorry, that was a hell of a stutter. Alhambra, no, that was a heck of a stutter. Alhambra Court, we're on Rosedale Ave. It's a female on my right, she's taking a picture of her child. It must be her child's first day of school or something. Usually they take pictures of their first day of school. Nice truck on my right, DMC lifted. CRVs on my left, we have two CRVs. Must be a Honda Doozy. We got a sheriff's um, SUV on my right hand side. That's an actual cop's SUV. So this must be where he lives. This is the type of neighborhood too that when you live in the neighborhood, your neighbor is a sheriff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everybody in the back knows, oh, that's, that's the sheriff's house. I guess it's a piece of security. Rent to own on my left, Florida. Wow. 142 is rent to own. 142 Rosedale Ave, Spring Hill, Florida. In case you guys want to look into that. Rent to own. How does that work? You put a down payment and then you continue paying rent and then you own it at the end when you when when you reach the agreed cost or is it you drop a down payment or you put some money down, you're renting it and then at the end of the agreement, you got to buy it out, buy out a certain you know, whatever they ask. <laughs> it doesn't look like a bad neighborhood to live on. We're back at County Line Road. This is that main road that we started on. You remember, remember? This is that main road that we started on. That's County Line Road. I noticed too, there's not only um, private residential areas like on my right, there's a lot of like gated communities like on my left, Autumn Oaks. Autumn Oaks is like one of those surveil communities. Wow, I got a car behind me flying. I'm sorry, I was doing 30, 30 miles an hour. Let me speed it up for you, buddy. I'm gonna do 45, 45 sounds fair, huh? 45, 45, I say 50, 50, 50. Can I, can I, can I get a 55, 55, 55, 55? No, 55 isn't even enough for that. He ain't about to fly by. Truce Circle, and y'all be thinking, I be driving fast. I'm, I'm a casual driver. <laughs> we just passed the Oak Lakes community on my left. Passing Fargo Court. We got more property for sale on my left. We got a little smoke shop and a trailer on my left. See that colorful trailer? That's a smoke shop. They sell e cigs, vape pens, and all that stuff. Passing Clearwater Drive. I'm, I'm gonna go up probably another block or two. These are little blocks on my right. Bain Ave on my right. That'd be something that I could have probably went up. But I'm gonna take it a little bit further. Maybe to the light and then I'll make a right. Hey, that rhymes. Yeah, right here. I think I'm gonna make a right right here. Cobblestone Drive on my right and East Road on my left. Let's, let's make a right. There's plenty of land for sale on, on this road, guys. Plenty of land. Look, even right here on my left. Before I turn, I saw two, three pieces of land for sale. This building on my right, Cobblestone Manor. Assisted living for facility. On my left, see that sign? For sale. They're selling random just land. So if you want to build a home, let's make this right here on Davenport Lane, right? Davenport, Davenport and Cobblestone Drive. Let's see what this little block looks like. This looks like an ideal environment if you're retired, if if you don't seek much entertainment other than shopping, you know, just beer everywhere. Everyone sells beer from, from Quickie Marts to gas stations to to the pharmacies we're on bancroft ave and davenport lane i can go left i can go straight i can go straight i can go left i think i'm gonna continue going straight um even walmart's like every place i won't i won't be surprised if best buy sells beer it's like no i'm kidding i don't think best buy sells beer because they're an electronics place but many businesses sell beer um As far as entertainment, you heard they had the little go-kart thing going on. You're not far from Tampa here. You're like 47 minutes away from Tampa. So if you move to a neighborhood like this, you're about 47 minutes away from Tampa, then you can feed off of what Tampa got going on in their town, you know? This is, I would say, on the northwestern part of Florida. If if you look at the Florida map, this is on the northwestern part. So it's, it's up, you know, it's closer to Georgia. This is, I believe, it's three hours and some chains away from Georgia. From Miami, this is like five hours from Miami, five and a half hours from Miami. So, <clears throat> we got a house for sale on my right. 72, 32 is for sale. Let me point you at this house so that you guys can get a good look at it in case you guys want to property check, check the, the price and all of that. This is the house right here, you see it? 
this is the house that's for for sale so in case you were wondering and you want to move here the address is 7232 davenport lane spring hill florida nice driveway nice garage looks like a all one story might have an attic so yeah like i was saying it looks like a retiree community because when i was in the walmart i seen i mean 90 percent of the customers were senior citizens they look like, re like retirees senior citizens vets i saw several gentlemen wearing the the i've we served with pride hat you know um we at davenport lane and clearwater drive yeah so it it looks like it could be possibly like a and then there's a lot of trailer parks, motor home parks, things like that. I can go right, I can go left, I can go left, I can go right. I think I'm gonna go left. So I guess raising your family here would be ideal. Um, <clears throat> retiring here would be ideal. Uh, or just to have a spare home. Maybe if you wanna have a Florida home, you know, you probably own equity in other states. And you want to say, hey, I, I got a home in Florida that's probably not too expensive. Bancroft Avenue, Clearwater Drive. Let's make this left right here so you can see this. I mean, there's a house for sale right here. Oh, I'm all right. This one for sale. Another one under contract. Wow. The address is 199. This is Bancroft, right? 199 Bancroft Ave, Spring Hill, Florida. Now, to my knowledge, even some of the cheaper homes in Miami going for 400, 500,000, 600,000 and up, upwards of millions plus, right? Over here, I won't be surprised if this is like, I haven't checked the prices yet, but I'm assuming like in the hundreds, like, like a, you know, 150,000, 250,000, maybe 300,000. I mean, give or take, but it depends on what you're looking for. Cause we've had this talk in my Philadelphia hood videos. When I would do the hood tours to like the more prominent areas of Philly, and I will show you guys $800,000 houses. Or I will show you guys $500,000 houses. Or I will show you guys $300,000 houses in Philly. And people will question me and say, Tumble, why would anybody want to live in a neighborhood like that for $385,000? I don't know. Maybe it's the convenience of just being in the city and, and having the ambience and having business and having, you know, uh, you know, just... Some people like the historical vibe. Some people just want to say, hey, I live in Philly, be, you know, because of the, the, the historical nature that happened in Philly, you know, back in, what, 1776 and all that stuff, when they signed the Declaration of Independence and all that and whatnot. Um, some people like it for work and employment reasons. Let's make this right back on Davenport. This is where we started off, right? Yup, this is. So in Philly, you can get a home for 380. It's three stories, maybe two stories, three stories. And you're stuck in a row home. You're stuck next to a bunch of people. You don't have a huge front yard. You don't have a huge backyard. You might not even have a front yard. You might have a sidewalk. You don't have a huge backyard. It's probably literally like six feet wide by, no, six feet in depth by like 12 to 14 feet wide. Um, you might have a driveway. Uh, depends if you live in the Northeast. Northeast, they do have driveways and stuff. But anyway, the moral of the story is for 300 plus, you get a row home or 300 plus, you get one of these down here, which is more privacy, you know. I, I, I'll tell you something, since I've been away from Philly, other than what <clears throat> the internet, the World Wide Web will recommend me because they know that I'm, I swear, like the internet knows that I'm from Philly, so they'll tend to still <laughs> recommend me Philadelphia stuff. But other than seeing those headlines let's make this left here on clearwater drive cobblestone drive and clearwater drive other than seeing those headlines i haven't paid much attention or had to worry about like crime rate i'm sure every single town and county i've been in i've probably been in some dangerous areas i don't know you know i'm just going off the internet and just pulling up neighborhoods and looking them up they may not look so dangerous but you you never know you know what i mean um, but I haven't really worried about it as far as like the news perspective. I haven't had to really worry about crime weight, murdering, robbing, this and that. And every now and then I'll turn on the World Wide Web and I'll look at the internet and I'll see like Philadelphia, Kensington, this, or I'll see Philadelphia, nice town, that, or I'll see Philadelphia, like, whoa, Strawberry Mansion, this. And I'm like, oh man, like, <laughs> For 350000 you live in Philly, be prepared to get all that news crammed in your brain. For 350000 you live over here, you, 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 might be, you might be a little bit more at, at peace, you heard? Where it can be, Circle and Clearwater Drive is definitely refreshing. 
it's definitely refreshing. I'll tell you that much. I've had two months of, of for the most part, pure thoughts. Got a chance to organize my, my train of thought. Would I want to live in Florida? I know you guys are thinking, like, you guys are probably wondering, does Toon really like Florida? Would Toon possibly live in Florida? I don't know. I'm not... I'm not feeling Florida-ish. Florida's nice. It's a nice vacation spot. But I can't say yet. Where I can be circle and clear with a drive. A house like this is cool. Like, like look at this house right here in the corner. I think that's a cool house. I was gonna go straight, but but let's but let's go left just so I can show you that the house. I think that's that's a cool house. It's not bad. It has an extension. You got a lot going on. I would prefer like a two-story home. There's several neighborhoods that I saw in Florida that were extremely eye-catching. For example, the Boca Raton neighborhood with, with those mansions. Sheesh. Sheesh. I mean, I'm trying to live humble, but like my minimum requirements is like a minimum, like a two-story high, you know, one of these nice wide houses, driveway, garage, some piece, piece of property, land around me. Um, you know, it'd be nice to have a roof deck, but in these neighborhoods, it doesn't look like roof deck is 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 uh, is an option unless you probably customize it. Remember, when we talked about my Philadelphia style stylization at home, I would talk about like swirly rooftops, this, that, and the third and the fourth top, and roof deck, and third deck, and second deck, and we were talking about a bunch of crazy stuff, and I was joking around about it. But I know the zoning code is different over here, so you may not be able to do certain things over here, but. Florida's cool. I think it's a cool vacation spot. If I had some extra money and I could afford an, uh, you know, an affordable home over here to have it as like a vacation home, hey, why not, right? Let's make this right on Galena Ave, County Line Road, and Galena Ave. But yeah, as like living here forever, ever, ever, a a a, living here forever. <laughs> I don't know about that. Maybe a couple years. Maybe like three, four, five years, and then sell the house. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. You you know what's what's funny, what's intriguing? I've spoke to several individuals who lived here in Florida. You know, because I've been in over 12 different plus counties since I've been here in Florida. There's some that we didn't even document. Some that we use as transitional points of interest where we went from point A to point B, point C, point D, point E, A, F, G, A, X, O, N, M, N, O, Y, P, whatever, right? Um, wow. Look, look at that giant rig in that driveway. See, like, this house right here on my left is cool and i like the black gate that they got around it they got some cool um halloween stuff on the doorway might might have add like they're really doing it big with, with the ha ha the halloween decorations right galena drive and clearwater drive i'm sorry galena ave and clearwater drive wow that's not a bad little house and it's not huge but it's not tiny wow the driver they have like what type of cars they got parked there mercedes a Jaguar, and they got another Mercedes here. Okay, okay, show off, show off. <laughs> That's an in insider joke. Um, <clears throat> let me make this right instead of going left. I think left's gonna shoot us back to the main road. This is no outlet, but it's cool. We'll make a U turn. Yeah, I feel like. So what I was saying about the several individuals I spoke to, I spoke to several gentlemen that were lifelong residents and or living here for more than 30 plus years. I talked to this one dude who lived here his whole life. He said he's sick of it. He said he's tired of it. That he's, that, that, that he, and I was blown away because I'm like, wow, in my mind, look at these beautiful birds. I can't get enough of these, these animals, these animals and this wildlife that's over here. I feel like I'm in a safari. Look at these white birds with these long orange beaks, long legs. These aren't birds that I'm accustomed to seeing in my neck of the woods per se, you know what I mean? Figuratively speaking, of course, because I'm not from the woods. But um, yeah, like they were telling me this this one dude, he's he he traveled in the country too. He said that he's like all tired, he's all Florida out. This other dude I spoke to who was in an RV, he said he's lived here for 33 years. He said he was done with it. He was complaining about Florida, basically. Um, I spoke to this other dude. Surprisingly, I went to a local Chinese store here in Spring Hill. And I was ordering and I was talking to the counter lady. They had a young Hispanic female, which was surprisingly new to me. Cause our Chinese stores in Philly, they don't hire nobody but their own family. They had a young Hispanic female. She looked like a high school student. She looked like she was either Mexican, Puerto Rican. She was some type of Latin. She was a Latin young girl, probably 
16, 17, maybe 18, maybe she was a senior in high school, I don't know. But I guess they probably got her there in case they're Spanish speakers and they don't understand. So they got her as a counter girl. She was taking my order, I was ordering what I order, you know. And um, at the end of the order, I asked if I could get some fried plant plantains, like some totones with salt, pepper, garlic, you know. Um, we're at Highland Court and Clearwater Drive. I'm gonna make this right. This is probably gonna take us back to the main road. So I asked for the totones at the end, and and, and I said, do y'all, in, in English terms, do you have fried banana? It's, been, it's, it's not really the banana that you guys are thinking of, like the yellow soft banana. It's a, it's a hard banana. Um, <laughs> that sounds weird, doesn't it? Um, they can call it platano maduro, or it's like, it's it's a plantain. It's 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 in the banana family. It looks just like a banana, but it's extra green. And if you slice it, deep fry it, then beat it up with a with a mallet, and then put some 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 salt, pepper, garlic on, it, or deep fry it again and put some salt, pepper, garlic. There's another house for selling, right? Um, and then it, it tastes pretty pretty good. It's, it's not bad. So they they said no, right? And then the the young Hispanic female who was behind the counter, she she said, wow. Are you talking about? And then she said it, platano maduro, because that's because she was Spanish, so she kind of knew what I was talking about. I said, well, kind of, because there's a Dominican version that's sweet, and then there's like the regular version. And you get the Chinese store version, which is not sweet. I said, but yeah, totones, pretty much. She said, I've never heard of a Chinese store selling totones. We're back on County Line Road, y'all. This is that that main road that we started off at. Um, she said, I've never heard of a Chinese store selling. So I guess that was new to her. And I said, well, yeah, where I'm from, you know, they sell Totones regularly. Let's make this right on Paris Ave, County Line Road and Paris Ave. So I said, I'm from Philly. And there was a gentleman sitting behind me who was from where? From Philadelphia. There was another customer order who was from Philly. He said, I'm from the Taconi section. I'm like, yo, what's up? Yo, that's crazy. He's like, hey, and he looked really happy to, to see another Philadelphia native. <laughs> he was probably in his mid 50s, maybe early 60s, because he said that he lived in Florida. He said he, he moved 33 years ago. So he says that he's been living in this neighborhood, not this specific block, but on the main avenue. I didn't take y'all there yet. I don't know if we're going to get through that on this tour. I'll probably designate another tour for it. But. He said he, that, he, that he moved here when he was like, he said when he was in his 30s, like early 30s, 31, 32. He said he lived here for 33 years, so that'll make him what, 31 plus 33 is like, he's like, 30 plus 30 is 60, plus one plus three is four, so 64 maybe? Maybe give or take, so he was in his early 60s, let's just say, right? We got Galliano Court, let's make this right, because it's a no outlet, and we like taking these no outlets to see what the no outlets offer. This is a private community, this is like, you know, a, a private community without the gates. Like they can tell that you're not from here because you know they know who comes in and who comes out. So he was talking to me about you know Philly. He's like, yeah, back when I used to live in Tacony, it, it was the ghetto. He he said that 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 it wasn't a neighborhood to be in. I told him that I'm from the Kensington area. He said, oh yeah, I know Kensington. He said that he used to go pick up girls from back in Kensington. Back in the whoa, look at these gigantic birds over here. Oh wow, look how tall they are. Could you imagine waking up? I'm, I'm sure if you live in the country, then you're used to this, you're accustomed to this. But I, coming from the city, from Kensington, let's just say, cannot imagine seeing these, and the camera doesn't do justice. The camera doesn't let you see the, the beauty of these giant birds. They're huge, they're gray. I would say two feet long legs, long necks, red um, eyeballs and stuff. I'm gonna make this little U-turn to see if you got, I'm, I'm, I'm moving so slowly to like not scare them. But you see them? These things are huge. This is something that I would see on a Six Flags wildlife safari. And I'm seeing it for free over here. These people, I'm sure they're bored of it. Like, man, those birds too, they're regular. But to me, man, that's decent. But um, so yeah, so he was pretty happy to see another. He said, wow, that's that's cool. You're from Philly, I'm from Philly. He was telling me like how it was back in the day and that, that, that he left, he came over here for a better life. I said, hi, I said, how do you like it? He said, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty good, you know? And he was raising a family, so I guess he came over for family purposes or whatnot. But he, I, I said, do you visit Philly often? He said that he was there like four years ago, that he goes to visit his family. Galliano Court, Clearwater Drive. That's the intersection we're at. But, you know, I'm sure if he, if he only went straight to his family's neighborhood and then left and went back to the airport, he hasn't got a chance to see the growth of Philadelphia. 
you know, the change of it. Um, you only tend to see the news. He, he did mention the news. He said, yeah, I've been seeing Philly on the news all the time, which is a shame. Nothing to be proud of that we always are on the news. It's not for the best thing sometimes. We're at Dorica Ave and Clearwater Drive. But it's amazing. It's really amazing that um, to hear different per perspectives of, of different people, you know. And I think that same rule would apply for every every state and every county because there's people in Florida who are tired of Florida. There's people in Philly who are tired of Philly. There's people in Jersey who are tired of Jersey. There's people in New York who are tired of New York. There's people of California who are tired of California. There's people who are on Outlook Ave and Clearwater Drive. And there's people who would, if you would visit California, you would say, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. This is an awesome place to live in. And they'll say, oh man, I'm tired of California. LA is this, LA is that. Or vice versa, there's people who live in Mexico for the past 20 years in New Mexico and to you, it'll be an awesome visit. It'll be an awesome attraction. But from their experience of living in Mexico for so many years, they're like, nah, oh, man, too, you ain't you ain't missing nothing. We're on Arcadia Avenue, Clearwater Drive. Let's make this left-hand turn. Beautiful ash blue house on my right. There's a young lady loading her daughter into the vehicle. But yeah, so that goes to show you that I guess perception is in the eyes of the beholder. If you live anywhere too long, you might get tired of it. It also depends on what you require and your demands of a neighborhood. If you don't have high demands, high expectations, if you stay home, you're a homebody. We're at Parma Lane and Arcadia Ave. If you're a homebody and you don't require much entertainment, much fun, you just want a place to rest your head, you know, maybe a place to, close to work. And I don't know if you can find work around here. There's plenty of places, like, there's plenty of retail businesses. And like I said, um, downtown Tampa's 47 minutes away. So if you're into one of those offices, executive jobs, then you might be able to find something in downtown Tampa. You got Orlando, that's like an hour and 20 minutes away from here, give or take. You got Jacksonville. You got plenty of places that are within driving distance. So if you're one of those people who don't mind driving an hour or two to get to work, there's options. For me, I don't know. Like I kind of want the peace and quiet. I want the quiet solitude, you know, that quiet life. But I don't know. I kind of need. I don't know. I need, I need like a. I need like a Miami near nearby. <laughs> Dawson Avenue County Line Road. I need like. And these. I don't want to live in Florida. Um. I want to continue traveling the country, seeing what what looks nice, what catches my attention. Like if there was like a mountainy neighborhood, like a North Dakota, South Dakota, Colorado type stuff with a Miami-ish nearby. Miami-ish or a Philadelphia-ish nearby. When I say that, I say it figuratively speaking. I don't literally mean Miami, but I mean like a thriving city with ambience, with entertainment, with with eateries, with with life. But if you, when you go drive your little 40 minutes to an hour away to your home quiet town, I mean, we got that in Philly, technically, because we got Philadelphia, which is the city, and then you could drive to Bucks County. You could drive to, to, to one of those little, you know what I mean? Like Montgomery County, one of them little quiet areas but I think I'm all PA'd out. I'm all Pennsylvania'd out, if that makes sense. So I don't know. I'm, I'm still up in the air with it. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say that, that I wanna live here just, just yet. Um, but it, it, it doesn't wholeheartedly attract me. The main place that attracted me was like the places that I can afford. <laughs> That's funny, right? Look at them cute birds on my right. Them things look fake. They look like fake. That thing is like two, three feet tall. It's this taller than a toddler. I would be afraid to have my toddler standing next to that bird. I'd be afraid the bird gonna peck my toddler. Yo, that th them things look fake. I'm telling you, they look like lawn ornaments. They look so cool, the wind's blowing in their feathers. And he's eyeing me. He's like, get close and I'm gonna poke a hole in your tire. <laughs> We're at Fountain Court and Padget Street. Padget. P-A-D-G-E-T-T. -T, Padget. Damn, they got a giant frog on their lawn. Not a real frog, but they got like a like a like a lawn ornament or a lawn statue. A huge frog. I say it's like three feet long by like two feet high. The biggest frog I've seen in a long time. These houses are nice. They're I mean I'm I'm not gonna say that they don't have nice houses down here. They have nice houses. Different parts of Florida all have different nice houses, different styles. I honestly don't want to go for one story. I'm a three-story um, child, so I grew up in a three-story home. <clears throat> Even being in a two-story was tough for me growing up because I felt like it wasn't enough space. 
I know that I'm not gonna be able to get a, a, a three story. And it, let me not say I know, cause that's that's solidifying my fate. Anything is possible. So if I want a three story home in the country, it's possible. I just gotta you know earn up the chump chains. I gotta earn the pennies up. I gotta start saving my shillings, <laughs> as my fellow youngster leprechaun would say. But um, they, they got solar panels right there on Hollow Ave and Fountain Court. Let's go around this this little circle. Look, they got a cool dolphin. We were just talking about the the creative. Um, mailboxes that I've seen, like CRV, Living Modest. That was my old C CRV right there. Um, look at, they got a mailbox um, dolphin holder. Look at that, that's decent. And they're right here next to the water. There's a little court. <clears throat> so yeah, but I would like at minimum like a two story just to have that extra space if you, if you wanna get away from your loved ones. <laughs> you got a little, ho a, like a holiday gathering and, and everybody's on the first floor and you want to go take a breather, you go upstairs and just get away from everyone. And just to have more like rooms, more places to do activities. All in all, it's nice. It's a nice area. It's not bad. Bunch of squirrels running on my left. Those are five squirrels running. American flag on my left hand side. Full staff. Those birds must be like a couple. Must be a male and a female because they're staying close together. We just passed the birds again. One thing that I did notice about we're passing Oberlin Street, Fountain Court and Oberlin Street. One thing that I did notice about Florida is some areas have more lizards than other areas. Some areas have more squirrels than other areas. Some areas have more exotic birds than other areas. Uh, in one area in Opelika, I saw iguanas for the very first time. Same thing with the Venetian Causeway. I saw iguanas for the very first time. I was on the hunt for iguanas throughout the whole entire Florida. I didn't see them until I got to those two specific places that I mentioned. I'm thinking like, you wanna go to Florida period, you don't see iguanas everywhere. Nope, I guess they're, they're, they thrive in other areas more than, than, than some. Um, same thing with the little lizards. Some areas I will, I will see one or two animal, you know, casually just strolling by. Other areas I will see a dozen animals, a dozen lizards just run by me, which was amazing. Let's make this right on Hollow Ave and County Road. Oh, this is gonna shoot us right back around. I think I saw the gentleman walking his dog here. He's gonna think I'm stalking him. <laughs> Let me see. Yeah, this is Oberlin. This takes you back to Oberlin. So Oberlin Street is where I saw the gentleman walking the dog. I don't think I want to go through there because he didn't notice me. <sighs> or shall I? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, let's let's go through Oberlin. There's going to be a dog walker on my right hand side. That's how well I, I pay attention. I didn't mention him the first time, but I'm sure that he's going to notice me because he was looking at me when I was driving by. Now he's on my left hand side. I'm sorry. He was on my right hand side at first, but now he's on my left hand side. He's wearing the, the baby blue shirt, cargo khaki pants, some sneaks, and he got a, it looks like a, like a vet hat right here on my left. You see him walking his dog? It's like a little tiny, like, uh, Yorkie or something. I don't know. I'm not too sharp on my small dog reads. The only thing I know is like Chihuahua, <laughs> a Chihuahua and a hot dog. I can tell you where those dogs are. All right, let's make this right-hand turn back on County Line Road. See across the street, private property, do not enter. That's a private community. That's a gated community. I've seen a lot of those on, on this road too. I guess gated communities are good for the people who desire maximum security. You know, they don't want riffraff. They don't want random people driving through the neighborhood. But then again, those are probably like um, homeowners association type of communities where, you know, you only, you have to pay, you know, rent, you have to do this, do, do that, you have to pay an annual protection fee, or you can't do certain things to the property, you gotta follow the code strictly, and so on. <clears throat> Petco County Fire and Rescue Station on my left. I'm passing Ruskin Ave, I should have went down Ruskin Ave, but it's cool. Ruskin Ave's probably gonna take us back through where that guy was at. Let's continue traveling a little further. Let's make this right here, let's try something different. And notice, this is all off of County Line Road. This is Bal Balboa Ave and County Line Road. This is about 10 minutes away from where we where we started. <clears throat> I 
we're approaching Cactus Circle, Balboa Ave and Cactus Circle. Now, Cactus Circle would infer to me that it's a that it's a round block. It's circle. I don't know. It would take me around in a circle. So let's see if that's true. Basketball courts. So uh, I was about to speak about debris. I see a Fruity Pebbles box we just passed by. But other than the Fruity Pebbles box, which was probably an accident, I don't see much trash. I don't see much debris, much chip bags, um, you know, like bottles, plastic bottles, glass bottles. I don't see cigarette butts. I see another little piece of plastic over here on my left, but uh, I don't know. I, I'll give them a pass. Maybe it flew out of their dumpster. I don't see like beds and mattresses and sofas like we've seen in some of the areas of Florida. It looks relatively clean. Relatively clean, peaceful. Cactus Circle and Ruskin Ave. Oh, remember we didn't go down Ruskin? This this took us back to Ruskin. So let's go left. Cause I don't wanna keep going straight cause it's gonna take me back to that road with the dude that was walking the dog. Um, yeah, the chain link fence on my right. You don't see those too often over here. So every time I see the chain link fence, it's, it's interesting. Chain link fence, it's a cheaper way to fence off your property. I know in Philly, we got a lot of chain link fence everywhere. Cactus Circle and Ruskin Ave. Let's make this left over here. I think it's a cool vacation spot, though. <clears throat> Definitely a cool vacation spot. East Point Court, let's make this right. Like, for example, I would probably, in order to own a home down here, I would probably have to own two or three homes. At least two. One would be a city home. Quote, unquote, let's say, like, for example, like, if not Philadelphia, maybe another city. Like a, like a, like a Charleston, for example. Nah, that's, that's, that's too expensive, and, and that's still more, like, suburban, too. Because once you leave Charleston, the city, I'm not really a Carolina fan either. Carolina was cool to visit, but I can't foresee myself living in the Carolinas. That's just me personally. I don't want to shoot anybody's bubble down. If you guys are living in the Carolinas and you love it, then more power to you. I don't know. Like, I'm searching for an energy. I'm searching for an energy here, and I haven't received the energy just yet that I get from my hometown. And maybe that might be biased because I've been there my whole life. But I haven't given up faith yet. I know there's still another, you know, couple dozen states to, to explore. We're at East Point Court and Rusk Circle. A nice house is one thing, but you got to feel the energy from the environment. You you, you got to feel the, you, you got to feel, you know, happy there. And I try to put my mind in some of these neighborhoods and say, what I, what, what would I do if I live, like visiting for a week or two would be cool. But like I was talking about early on in the story, we had a gentleman walking blue shorts, camouflage shirt, glasses, black sneaks. He was taking a walk. You, you, you notice how he had to walk in the street though? He didn't have a sidewalk. We're on Rusk Circle and Rusk Circle. Wow, this is the intersection of Rusk Circle and Rusk Circle. Interesting. Look at this house right in the corner. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Like I would own that home and I would still have to own a city home. And I would come down here and stay here for six months, probably stay here through like the winter season. That'd be cool, right? And then have like a city home and stay there for, for six months. And so maybe multitask, maybe rotate. But at least in this type of neighborhood, you would know as long as you have ADT security, you probably make good friends with your neighbors. You let them know, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be gone for six months. Punch buggy, no punch back. We got a punch buggy beetle on my left hand side. Punch whoever's next to you. I don't care who it is. If it's your mother, your brother, your father, your sister, your spouse, your niece, your nephew. If it's your newborn little baby, give them a little punch buggy punch back. <laughs> No punch back. We're on Planet Road and Rust Circle. But um, yeah, look at these houses. These these houses here are pretty cool. They got a lot of extensions. You know, they they look like one story, one and a half story. But what makes them cool is they got a lot of little additional pieces of the architecture added on. It looks like you know, like they kept building on and building on, kind of like the Smith and Wesson house. Is it the Smith and Wesson house? Um, Planter Road and Balboa. Uh, uh, Balboa, I'm from Philly, get it? Balboa, Rocky Balboa. Um, but yeah, guys, so this would be a nice you know, spot to have a spare home. If you want to get away from all the madness in the world, you come over here, relax, chill. It's cool. Tell you something, nobody's going to come and visit you. <laughs> I'm at the point of my life, you know how they say when you get older, you know, you'll be lucky if you have five friends. 
Man, when I was in Philly, I had very, I had, did, I did have a couple people who would come and visit me. Shout out to my cousin Ames Chavo. Shout out to my brother, Hood Stunt. Shout out to to Ramon and Kids Garage. Shout out to um, my boy Nick, my boy Anar. Shout out to um, you know a couple other heads that that would come in and stop by and show show love. You know, people who were or text me every now and then. But you know, we we're adults, so you know, it's it's like. It's just like follow-ups and checking up to see how you're doing and that's it and after that we go back to our personal lives for another six months <laughs> i have very few people who would visit me on on a weekly basis very few like two or three people who would visit me like shout, oh, shout out to my buddy um peanuts my boy peanuts that's um lex and g's uh cousin but um yeah man like once you get to this age it's, it's like i guess you you make new friends uh, along the journey you don't take friends with you. I mean, it, you, you're 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 humbled and, or let me not say humbled. Humble is a bad word. You're um, fortunate enough to still have friends with you throughout a lifetime. But like I said, one of my main friends, my boy, rest in peace. Y'all already heard him. Y'all heard his name several dozen times. Scott Dollars is no longer with us. Mr. Walter Scott Rosebrow the third. I know he would have visited me wherever I went in the country. But um, you know. The main friends you have when you become an adult is your significant other, your spouse, whether it's a he or a she. <laughs> oh, look at them cool birds on my left, yo. They tall as ever. I can never get used to that. I can't get used to that. Maybe if I lived here for, for, for a couple of years, I would definitely like some as pets. Like, I, not pets, but like, like I would be so cool with them that they would know to come to my backyard for, for food. We'll sit down. We'll, we'll have a brewski. You say, <laughs> Uh, I'll be talking to the birds. My neighbors will be looking at me like I'm crazy. Like that guy loves wildlife. But uh, there's a no outlet on my right. Let's go through it because I'm curious. <clears throat> Hopefully, you know, you know what they say: curiosity killed the cat. I'm curious, George over here. Hopefully, no wild tigers and stuff come out. But um, <clears throat> yeah, the main entertainment you have as an adult, I've I've learned in my young, very small, 33 years of living, <clears throat> is your family. In the end, it's your family and your loved ones, which would be your spouse, your significant other. And if you have children, if you're fortunate enough to have kids, your kids. That's it. That's your family. That's your entertainment. You know, you might make friends as you get older, whether it's from the World Wide Web, <clears throat> whether it's neighbors, you move into a new neighborhood. The thing is, you don't know those people too well. You only know what they want you to see. You know what I mean? Look at this fish mailbox on my right. They must either A, love eating fish or B, love fishing. But um, yeah, it's 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 kind of tough meeting brand new people and then, you know, instilling the faith of friendship in them because you know people turn in a heartbeat. So it's kind of iffy. Look, we got a female out here. She's with a with 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 a leaf blower. Yeah, you go, girl. She's leaf blowing. We got an RV on my right. I'm gonna make this U-turn. She hasn't noticed me just yet. When will she notice me? 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 She has not noticed me. Oh my gosh, she's still looking down in, in the, her leaf blowing. That's how safe she feels. But she doesn't, you know, pay attention to cars driving in her little no outlet area. That goes to show you. This is nice though. It's a neighborhood that I would admire raising a kid in. You know? The neighborhood that I wouldn't mind raising a kid in. I always thought like, why would you take your kids out of the ambience? I would want my kids to be ruggish. I would want my kids to, to be alert. I would want my kids to be on point. I would want my kids to grow up in the neighborhood that I grew up in because I want them to be on their P's and Q's. I want them to be fully aware of, you know, the potential hazards the world has to offer. But then as you get older and you see why people leave and you see these these neighborhoods, I guess it, I guess it makes sense. I guess that's when having a six month city home and a six month country home will come in handy because six months your kids are living in the city they they getting these stripes up six months your kids are living in the country relaxing and preparing and, and, and warming up for the next six months of being back in the hood <laughs> say no but they ain't gotta be in the hood hood but you know you can have a city home there's beautiful expensive city homes like pine street like if you live on 7th and pine 7th and walnut 8th and walnut in center city philadelphia you live in like rittenhouse square you live in like you know, Washington Square, you live in like these this prominent neighborhoods, you know, there's areas that you can live in that are beautiful that are still in the city. <clears throat> and I'm sure every single, what I've learned is even Charleston, Charlotte, um, Baltimore, um, you know, 
Delaware. There's there's so many places that have a city, and they have. We're at Dartmouth and Baffing Circle. There's plenty of places that have a, a, a city, right? They have beautiful neighborhoods and rough neighborhoods, as I like to call hoods, you know? But um, yeah, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, we just reached our one hour mark. I wanna say thank you all for watching. I appreciate your support. I'm gonna do some more drive-throughs out of this area, so turn on your notification bell, show some love, let me know your thoughts, let me know if anything intrigued you, sparked any interest in this conversation. This is your homeboy, Mr. Toon, Mr. Toon Dollars. Tune 215, Tune Ski, Tune Stir. Y'all know, Tune out here, Tune be chilling. You know, Tune out here in the little Smarty Smart. The Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Y'all know, Tune, and I'm tuning out.